Hey Soul Family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot. And in today's reading, we are revealing new events in your life. So we're taking a look at what's happening next for you. And to do this reading, we are, as usual, going to be picking out four piles together. In this case, today we are picking out four flowers. And I can already see the four piles peeking out. So one, two, three. I was meant to take this one. Let's take that one, yeah? All right, so for pile number one, we have Venice Mallow. This is what your flower looks like. For pile number two, we have Camellia. For pile number three, we have Anemone. And for pile number four, we have Gloxenia. So take a look at which one of these four flowers you're the most drawn to for today's reading. If you like to pick with crystals, let me add these right now. There we go. So for pile number one, we have the beautiful selenite. I love selenite. This is what it looks like. For pile number two, we have the beautiful moonstone. I love the moonstone. I better stop saying that because I'll probably say it for every crystal, the beautiful moonstone. For pile number three, again, I said I won't say it again. <laughs> we have the rose quartz, lovely. For pile number four, we of course have the gorgeous, I have to say it. <laughs> Carnelian. There we go. Better not make promises again. <laughs> All right. So take a look at which one of these four piles or four crystals you're the most drawn to. And that's probably the pile for you here today. As I always tell you, if you feel drawn to more than one pile or perhaps a day, you feel drawn to all of the pile. Remember, remember, dear soul family, it is your intuition, your magic that always guides you to the right reading. So whether you're just drawn to one and you know that's it, or you feel drawn to several ones and you know that these are it, or today you kind of feel like these four piles are for you, they're speaking to you. Whatever your intuition is calling for, listen to it. It is your magic and it will always guide you to the right readings, to the right message you're meant to hear. And as always, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I'll see you in your readings. Hey Soul Family, this is the shuffling and the card picking process. Welcome to this section. I love involving your energies in it and I love spending this time with you guys. And as you know, uh, before I begin reading, I always mention that if you're interested in any of the decks that I use, I always leave their names down in the description box. On the left are the oracle cards that we will be using in this reading. And on the right are the tarot cards that we will be using in this reading. Whoa, I feel like we're ready. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so in today's reading, oops, very sorry, little giraffe. <laughs> in today's reading, we're taking a look at uh, new events happen happening in your life that you don't know about. So we're revealing new events. We want to know what is happening next for you. All right. So what is happening today for everyone in the reading, please, for our four piles? One, two, three, and 
four, lovely. I'll be using the tea leaf for today's reading. And to do this, I'm going to be dividing the tea leaf. Let's first shuffle them, right? <laughs> Very large deck. I love it. <laughs> so we will be dividing the tea leaf deck into four sections and then we'll be um, shuffling them individually. So let's say, for example, two, three, one, and four. And see what we get. I left everything in, the months of the year, the tea leaves themselves, the astral houses, everything. And let's see what we're getting. So let's pick a card for pile number, oh, there we go, for pile number one. Let's pick a card for, I said I feel this one, for pile number two. Pile number three. So what new event is being revealed here for the four piles today, please? What is happening next in their lives? Ooh, okay, thanks a lot. Wonderful. So we have our four leaf messages ready. <laughs> now let's get into our tarot cards. Is this the right way up? Yes. I feel like these two are ready. So two, two, right? What is being revealed in today's reading? For the poor, for the four piles, uh, for their lives, what is happening next, please? There we go. All right, next, right way up. Ooh, this is a collective message. I always feel it's a collective message when, when it pops. But in this case, it fell right under the third, I believe. So I'm actually gonna leave it there. It did not turn the other way around. At least I didn't see what was there. So two. It flipped so fast. I hope you guys didn't see it either. <laughs> so two. Two. And two. Great. All right. Moving on to our next deck. And... This is a new deck that I got. I love it. Uh, such beautiful art, medieval uh, art. I, I, I love, love this deck. Sh thought I should show it to you before we sh uh, shuffle together. All right, so, ooh. One and two. It depicts angels. I think it's called um, the Angel Tarot. Something like that, I forgot. I'll leave, anyways, leave it down in the description box. So, two. What is being revealed today uh, in the four piles' lives, please? What is happening next for them? There we go. Moving on to our next tiny deck. <laughs> I'll be using this one as well during the reading. If we want any sort of clarification or questions or advice, as we sometimes do when it's needed. All right. So, two. Two. Two and two. I feel that this one, perhaps it's a collective message. I've really felt it in the energy. We have the chariots. So collectively, I really do feel that there is this movement forward. That is for sure for everyone. Um, I feel like if life has been going slow or stuck for a while this is a time where things are going to start to move 
guys everyone watching this preparation pile this is a strong message for you things are starting to move quickly actually so look forward to that okay so we do know that the chariot is not included in the four piles <laughs> in from this deck of course from this deck Ooh, another message the lovers it looks like for the collective as well this is a time where you'll be enjoying good relationships with some dear people around you you might get closer to a best friend you might find love within you and because of that helps you create better connections with either the people around you or new ones or you might really find your significant other there's a uh, a lot of love in the air um this at this time i can see it in the readings these couple of months these two three months we've been getting a, in one in so many readings where we'd find a lot of cards at the same time oracles and tarot cards showing love so for some people it could be that you might be finding love finding your significant other but of course the lover's card doesn't need to be that it could be you finding peace within and healing you finding love with your connections with others you finding your soul family so there is um the there is this energy of having good connections look forward to that um it's coming strong for you as you were watching the preparation pile if you're watching the preparation pile so you have the chariot and the lovers what wonderful cards to have right all right now let's prepare our poor uh, for why do i kept saying poor <laughs> poor i think in uh, uh spanish means four just like in french pour. so yeah it looks like um this reading is for something in specific let's let's see let's see or it's dedicated to you <laughs> for you let's see what this is all about pour you for you pour toi dedicated especially for you we have pile one ready now and let's add uh, the selenite pile number two Oh, I forgot the main card, Camellia. Camellia is a name that means a lot to me. Um, this is a personal story. You can uh, uh, press forward if you don't feel like listening to this. This card means a lot to me. Um, this, this. I don't. I don't mean the card. I mean the flower. I had a very strong connection with my grandmother. She meant a lot to me, and she passed away a couple of years ago, and um, it wasn't easy on me at all. She was one of my best friends and dear people in life, and she named her niece Camellia, <laughs> and she was uh, she she was in love with that name, and so this name for this reason means a lot to me too. I feel like. One day, if I ever get a daughter, I'll be calling her Camellia. I don't know why I wanted to share that, but uh, seeing the card, <laughs> it um, reminded me of this memory. So, just thought I should share. You're my soul family after all, right? <laughs> okay, so let's prepare pile number three. ready with the beautiful rose quartz gosh isn't the rose quartz gorgeous and pile number four
is also ready. Ooh! We forgot the Gloxenia. There we go. With the beautiful garnet. All right, so I will leave our four piles are ready. Um, I wish you guys all the best of luck with the new events re being revealed in today's reading in your life. May you always have a wonderful life and let's get into your reading. Hi, pile number one, welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful Venice Mallow as well as the Selenite. And as you may know, in today's reading, we're revealing what's happening next in your life. Uh, what new events are happening in your life. Very excited about this reading today. And to do it, we will be taking a look at your Oracle cards first. So let me show you what your main card is. Um, the reason it says delicate fleeting beauty is that's how the Victorians uh, describe the Venice Mallow. In fact, the Venice Mallow is a sort of flower that only blooms for an hour every day. And so it's called the flower uh, of the hour. So I wonder how that is going to fit into your uh, reading. You also have a quote here on the card by L.F. Young. When life is not coming up roses... Look to the weeds and find the beauty hidden within them. So, looks like uh, there's a deep message here. And let's find out what's being revealed. So, ooh, so you have the queen card. I feel like this card is full of color and it has a lot of yellow, as we see in the Venice Mallow here. All right, let's keep your main card, your oracle card, I mean, here. You also have uh, Venus in Gemini with flattery. That is the god Janus looking uh, towards the past and towards the future. So in terms of something happening in the future, something, something happening now, I can clearly see that. But let's take a look again at the rest of your cards. You have rat. Someone working against you behind your back. What an interesting message, right? Let's see more. So this could be positive or negative, depending on the rest of the cards. This could be an actual person that's working behind your back. Or this could be events happening uh, that you cannot see at the moment that are about to be revealed to you. And that's what the reading is about anyways, right? It will all depend on what we see on the uh, with the rest of your cards. So you have the Hermit. You have Two of Wands. You also have the devil, okay. You have the eight of wands. You have the knight of wands. Oops, Ooh, well, this wanted to come out first, obviously. You have the Two of Wands. The Four of Wands. Kind of looks like the Wheel of Fortune, doesn't it? <laughs> At first glance. All right, and it has completion. And you have the Four of Wands again, wow divine order <laughs> in the revelation of these cards so four of wands coming up twice it looks like you're celebrating some sort of i would say in your reading victory why yes you do have pile number one in fact 
something or someone uh, working behind your back, especially the, the devil card appe appeared. It's unavoidable. You do see the two of wands here. The two of wands coming up twice, that's significant, as well as the four of wands. There's no question that there is a strong message here in your reading. And especially that we said that the Venice Mallow is a flower that only shows up once and um, at only an hour for an hour uh, every day. So we can see something being enclosed. The hermit is someone who's alone, who's working alone, uh, is not uh, connected with others. So yes, I would say I do see that you may be surrounded by either one person or several pile number one, especially that we have the snake in the hand here, who could be snaky and trying to do things behind your back. In fact, this is a strong message here. Uh, we do see that these people will be revealed. Uh, these people will be revealed very soon. The things that they are doing are going to be revealed for everyone to see. You'll be celebrating, um, taking your rights back from them, taking back control from them with the Knight of Wands and setting strong boundaries. We can see clearly here with flattery that your you're going to be very happy, first of all, of getting not just your rights back, but your image back. It's like if they were trying to um, taint, taint, taint your image, if they were trying to uh, paint you in a bad manner, I do see that this is absolutely changing for you in the near future. That's what's happening next in your life, pile number one. You do see that with this specific person or these people, you will be facing them head to head, as you see. And as we can see with the message here, when life is not coming up roses, look to the weeds and find the beauty hidden within them. And we can see here that at first with the two of wands, two heads coming together, right? It might feel like, oh no, am I going to get into this? Am I going to get into a war head to head with this person? It might first appear, as the message says, that it's something um, that is uncomfortable, something that is not rosy. But later on, not talking or do you see how they have their backs towards each other? Not facing each other is not a good thing for you in specific pile number one. And facing them will bring out into the light with the sun, with the sun in this queen card here, will bring into the light a lot of information. You see a lot of fire coming out. It seems like you're this, um, this confrontation is going to be powerful. It's going to bring out a lot of fire. As you can see, it's bringing, it's burning down wrong information. It's, uh, might start off as kind of a war, exposing the hidden things, bringing them into the light. And with that, with the eight of wands, you will find that during this comfort, confrontation pile number one you'll find your confidence you will find your power do you see how this the knight of wands is wielding uh, his wand with power moving forward and i do see angels and spirit guides really guiding you and uh, helping you win in this confrontation <laughs> uh, helping the ship move uh, helping you um uh, perhaps guiding you with right information or guiding you to move in the right direction, to see and to speak truth. Especially that the Eight of Wands is also considered a card of great communication, not just velocity. So you'll be seeing with clarity, you'll be speaking with power, and you will be exposing these people or this person. As it says, someone working against you behind your back, you will be burning um, what they're doing. It's coming down. And the four of wands coming twice for you, pile number one, we do see a lot of victory and success and celebration. You clearing out your name and that's why you have the queen. You shining again like the queen. 
And with the god Janus, we clearly see um, what uh, we see the the dynamic and the future of this connection totally change, changing. What was in the past is one thing, and what is to happen in the future is a totally different thing. Gemini is a sign really uh, connected with communication, so we see that with this communication, things are absolutely changing. Uh, pile number one and that is your next event in your life now confrontation is not easy i'm going to be picking out your tarot cards and getting advice from spirit on how to go about this communication with ease with strength so that you do it comfortably uh, and so that it passes smoothly what strong smart advice is there for you for this to pass smoothly pile number one but do see that you were uh, pulled to the selenite whether you've picked with the card or the crystal this really shows that uh, things will be the air will be cleared out this is very clear in your reading you will be facing facing the hidden things that this person is trying to uh, hide or use to taint your picture behind your back or to do things uh, behind your back energy is moving and it's all because of your confidence here Ooh, what's this eight of cups you're moving away from this energy for sure so as i said let's whoa get advice on how you are advised to uh, deal with this person or these people right so let's see what we have what you have pile number one what is your advice so you have the queen of swords i love the energy of the queen of swords and it makes so much sense do you see how this queen of swords has the mask off I, i'm going to talk about that in a second but let's see the rest of your cards these three are specifically very important they popped out you have the eight of wands how about I put them here so that when we want to access them, we don't disturb the other cards, right? You have the Eight of Wands again <laughs> with swiftness. Interesting. You have the King of Swords. Do you see how swiftness is surrounded by the Queen of Swords and the King of Swords? That is very significant. But let's see the two remaining cards. You have the devil card again. I mean, your cards are being repeated in such a magical way. Do you see the devil card here? This person is hiding so much um, in, the, uh, in the background. In fact, we do have the Hebrew letter Ein here, which has to do with seeing, looking, the eye. And yeah... So you're revealing hidden, hidden things. Expo you are exposing this person. Okay. So. The king of wands. So your advice, my dear pile number one, is very clear. We see the advice of uh, doing things swiftly. Don't. Don't hold your tongue back don't be afraid don't hold back in defending yourself don't be afraid your advice is to be honest with the queen and the king of swords to speak your truth uh, um, straightforward to say what you have and you will see that as you speak your truth powerfully accurately honestly you will be bringing so much information that is hidden out. And the truth wins at the end of the day. When you, ex when you expose, the, tr the, the when you're going tete a tete or head to head with false information and accurate information, when things are moving quickly with the Eight of Wands, quick discussion, you cannot, you, you cannot win truth because the truth is always at the tip of your tongue. It's much quicker and much faster than coming up with a lie and to think quickly on your feet uh, of giving an information that might be uh, different 
or doesn't negate another. So continue to speak quickly to say your truth. And as you speak, pile number one, you will be able to win because so many things will be exposed. So many mistakes are going to happen. So your advice is to speak with confidence, with great confidence and great truth, pile number one. One after the other, swiftly. Uh, don't allow for time to think. Just go one after the other, after the other. Saying your truth, exposing what you know, um, making others see um, what this person may have been doing behind your back. With this, pile number one, you have the four of wands coming up here twice. You will be celebrating victory. Uh, I do see your name will be cleared out from what is happening behind your back. And uh, really, the air will clear moving forward from this point. So pile number one, this is what I see is uh, what's happening next in your life. This is what this is the new event that's being revealed for you. I wish you all the best of luck with this situation. Do not be afraid to go head to head with this person. You go pound number one. You're going to do great. I know it. This is your message. <laughs> and if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Don't forget to click on your notification bell. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book. This book is small, straight to the point, And so you won't procrastinate or waste time reading it. But it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying this process. This book really holds true to its promise. If you want to check it out or see other testimonials or any other information that you may need, you'll find a link to this ebook. There's also an audiobook. If you enjoy that, down in the description box. And pile number one, it was such a pleasure doing this reading for you. Wishing you all the best of luck from my heart. I know you're going to be doing great. This is all going to be in the past, just as the God Janus here shows. And looking forward to a bright, peaceful life, uh, pile number one. Wishing you all the best of luck and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful moonstone as well as the camellia flower. So here it says destiny. It is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. This is a quote by William Shakespeare. All right. So let's take a look at your cards and how and see how all of this fits into what's being revealed uh, in your life what is happening next so to take a look at this event we're going to be looking at your oracle cards first so you have the mirror okay you also have mercury in libra with influence all right Quite interesting. You have club. Someone will try to make you do something against your will. Quite interesting. Let's see. Uh, get more information from your tarot cards and see a whole picture together. So pile number two, you have the chariot. You have the, wo the world card. So we see a quick end of a cycle here. But again, we have to um, consider the whole picture. You have the five of wands. Okay. So yeah, we see some competitive energy here. All right. You have... The chariot again, wow, this is significant. And if you have been watching the preparation pile and you saw the chariot fall, then this is definitely a confirmation for your reading now. You have the eight of wands. 
we see a lot of movement happening <laughs> as if the two chariots weren't enough right so there's a lot of movement uh, happening next in your life big changes big movement forward let's see what it's all about a lot of horses right you have the hanged man change in situation completely we see enlightenment you have the queen of cups and the world card again with the universe end of a cycle so yes pile number two what is happening next in your life we do see that one chapter is closing all together for you and you're moving forward into a new life this energy is happening rather quickly with the eight of wands uh, with the chariot coming up twice uh, seeing the hangman we do see that in this specific handman, I do see that there is some sort of information you are getting. You're being enlightened about something. And that's really helping you uh, be unstuck. Maybe there was a pause in some, t in some time in your life. Maybe now in the past for a long time or just for a small time. Some hurdles happening. Uh, someone actually trying to stand against you to cause trouble, bad energy. It doesn't necessarily need to be one specific uh, person. It could be some blockages or bad energy that kept you from moving against um, your goals. I'm really inclined to feel here that it could be both. It could be some hurdles or bad energies or blockages that were really holding you back from trying to move forward, even though you were trying. So you were influenced by the snaky or bad energy. And I would say with the five of wands, this bad energy to a great extent for you, pal number two was caused by some competitiveness. Um, maybe you have some people who are competing, uh, a, uh, competing with you against the same goal who want to reach the same goal they want to reach their first or they feel like with the universe card appearing they don't understand that everyone gets to have a piece it's like one of you is going to have it and they better get it so yes there was a lot of blockages happening due to bad energy surrounding you due to some competitiveness um uh, around you with the mirror i would say this is a reflection of this bad energy protecting you and moving away with the eight of wands um dissipating in your life and just like the moonstone things happen um in phases i do see with the camellia here uh, that it was a phase in your life and you did take charge to move forward and that's probably why you have a lot of the chariots here and the eight of wands you were working very hard yes there were a lot of blockages bad energy but you kept pushing through it you kept trying you weren't standing there saying what do i do there's nothing um in my hands to do no i do see that because of your energy of moving forward and despite of the blockages and the lack of results that um, didn't happen despite your you putting the energy is what i want to say because of that things are clearing out for you energy is clearing and i do see for you pal number two your aura is really clearing out the energy around you is clearing out and i do see you having a clear, beautiful aura again, things moving forward, ending this cycle of blockages, and finally the energy, uh, exactly what you want in your life is going, to be, is going to start happening. Remember, we do see with William Shakespeare's quote here, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. So despite the energy around us, despite the planets moving despite the uh, blockages that could happen from the people around us or from any other reason karmic cycles it is always in our hands 
to move ourselves forward, even if it takes time for this energy to dissipate, to continue to persevere, to continue to move forward, to try out again. You get knocked down nine times, you get up 10. That's the sort of energy that I see in your reading. And pile number two, you really should be proud of yourself. And with the mirror here, I see all the efforts that you've been putting in are going to be reflected back uh, into your life now. So what is the next event happening? Things are moving forward. Now, it's not clear to me at the moment what is exactly moving forward, right? Let's find out together, pile number two. What is exactly now moving forward for you? So what is exactly now unfolding for pile two? Now that we know that the first part, what's happening next is your energy moving forward. You starting to actually um, achieve something that you've been working towards, trying very hard to go through. Is it you getting out of a certain problem? Is it you reaching a goal? Is it you trying to achieve something? I don't know. Let's find out together, pile number two. What is it that, what is that exactly? So can we finally get more information about uh, pile number two's moving forward? What is happening for them, please? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So what is that? Pile number two, you have ooh, the Ace of Swords. Okay, I'm starting to actually uh, see what this is about. The Ace of Swords, the Star, wow. Okay, so that's clear. <laughs> you have, whoa, what cards? Pile number two, the Four of Wands. I'm so happy for you. You have the Princess of Swords, Swords, which is the Page of Swords. The Eight of Cups. We did say it was an end of a cycle. You're moving away from a certain energy and um, moving to another. And you have the Sun card ending the cards for this question. Wow, pile number two. Wow, what can I say? So what do I see in terms of what is being revealed as an event? What was blocked and what's coming into life? We see here with the Ace of Swords, first of all, you're gaining clarity on what you want to do exactly and how to do it. You're getting the right information now. In terms of perhaps the Ace of Swords, I would say an idea. You got an idea. You're getting a, a clearer idea of how to make your dream come true with the star. So taking a look at this at the ace of swords, the star and the four of swords and the four of wands, we're seeing that you are gaining clarity on how to achieve your dream and you will be achieving it because you have the four of wands with completion, you celebrating your dream. That is happening for you. So blockages are now uh, that kept you away from achieving your dream are now dissipating. You're moving quickly, pile number two, towards your dream um, uh, and achieving it. Uh, the sun, see, with the sun here, not only are you gaining clear clarity, but with the sun and the star, pile number two, your life is now shining bright. It's like the Wheel of Fortune, as we see in the Four of Wands here. Doesn't it look like the Wheel of Fortune? It's like you were at some sort of low or some sort of, you know, the, the ebbs and flows of life. So you, you were at some sort of low and you're going up. Uh, this energy of competition that or of bad energy or blockages that was in your way, was preventing you, was against your will, is now... Uh, cannot now affect you in any way you're moving forward. And that's why you have Shakespeare's quote here. Uh, it is not in the stars to hold your, our destiny, but it is in ourselves. And that's what I see here. You're yielding your own sword with the princess of swords here. You're moving forward as you always have, pile number two. Um, you have continued to fight against this despite 
what was going on. So you're moving away. Congratulations from that bad energy. You're uh, getting into a new era of a blessed uh, life that is rad that has a lot of radiation, peace, tranquility, love, happiness, and most of all, having your dreams come true. I do see here with the David star, it's this combination of feminine and masculine energy. Uh, your, it's like the stars are your guiding light. You're using your intuition to move forward. You're, get, you're downloading a lot of brilliant ideas. You have a clear, crystal clear idea of what you want to do exactly, how you want to move forward. These ideas are not just brilliant, but they are your guiding light. They are what will make your dreams come true. You are correct in the way you're formulating this together and you will complete it. You will make your dreams come true. Pile number two. All the best of luck with that. With the star, that's the hope card. That's a, a big dream coming true. Big dream or dreams coming true. You're moving now forward. And it's like, you know what I want to say? You're a, you're a force to be reckoned, reckoned with, pile number two. Despite all of the things against you, you kept knocking on the doors of fate, pushing it open so that you move forward and achieve what you want. And congratulations, pile number two. You're now moving into your next phase of your life. This is what's happening next. And this is the new event being revealed. No more bad energy. No more energy blocking your way. You, nothing can stop you now. <laughs> Did we notice a lot of horses from the very beginning? Nothing is standing in your way, pile number two. Pound number two, that was your reading. I am so happy for you. <laughs> May you always be blessed. May nothing ever stand in your way. May you always do good and get amazing blessings in your life. That was your reading, pound number two. If you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Oh, I have a message for you. Just remembered something. Uh, with the camellia, did you know that the camellia is not just a sacred flower in uh, Asia, throughout Asia, but also the Victorians used to import it from Asia and it was used with, uh, with lovers. It had a special meaning. And, um, you know, gifting a white camellia sends this message that the sender and the recipient were destined to be together. So... This is either a message from your spirit guides that they're always there with you, that you mean so much to them. That's one thing. Another thing could be, especially that we have um, what looks like Adam and Eve here. Perhaps this is a relationship coming in your life. That could be significant. Look forward to a tight-knit connection happening for you. At the end of the day, pal number two, what I can tell you is the sun is coming out for you. All the best of luck, pal number two. That was your reading. There's a new moon phase in your life, new beginning. All the best of luck. I know I keep saying that, but I mean it. If you've enjoyed this reading, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Don't forget to click on your notification bell. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book. This book is small straight to the point and so you won't procrastinate or waste time reading it but it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away all while enjoying this process if you're interested in that you'll find a link to this ebook now there's also an audiobook that i've narrated recently if you enjoy audiobooks like me it's there and pile number two it was such a pleasure doing your reading wishing you all the best of luck and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful rose quartz as well as the anemone. Now, let's take a look at your cards and see what event is being revealed next. What's happening next in your life? But first, let me show you your card uh, quite clo um, as a close up and read the quote that is related to pertaining to this card. It says, I felt like an arrow pulled back and ready to be launched into something big. 
So this is quite um, an interesting card. And I do see that this quote and anticipation, they do come very beautifully with how the anemone flower in general uh, behaves. So let's see how this fits with your reading. We'll be talking about that more depending on what we see. So pile number two, you have Aletheia. Interesting. Aletheia is a Greek word for truth. Latin. Latin or Greek? I don't want to be wrong with this. Yes, Greek. Okay. So you also have the sun in Libra with harmony. Beautiful energy. You have fox shrewdness and resourcefulness especially in business how interesting is that okay so i'm seeing here some sort of clarity here being because you have a lot of flowers blooming especially that the anemone uh, blooms it keeps closing and blooming we'll talk about that in a second but i do see that you're you're opening up your eyes to some uh, some sort of either lucrative business or investment idea, especially with the fox here, that will open up your eyes to great wealth, I would say. But let's take a look at the rest of your readings. I do see with harmony, perhaps it's going to help you balance out your finances. If you have some debts that you want to pay off, if you want to... Um, start balancing out uh, your life, taking control of it, and perhaps even investing and creating wealth, I do see this coming up for you, pile number two. So with Aletheia, um, there is some uh, uh, good information coming for you in terms of business or investment. But let's take a look at the rest of your cards. You have... The Two of Cups, the Nine of Wands, you have the Four of Wands, the Eight of Swords, you have the Knight of Swords, The Queen of Cups, The Fool, and you have the Ace of Pentacles. So with the Fool and the Ace of Pentacles, we straight away do see that you're starting out on a new business venture or some investment venture um with this knight of swords i kind of feel here the idea of bookkeeping so what is going on here pile number two it seems like recently or in the past you have been in some sort of um financial uh, you were financially reserved. Either you weren't spending or you were trying to pay off your debts or that finances in general were holding you back. But do you see here, I felt like an arrow pulled back and ready to be launched into something big. So I would say that the next event in your life will be some sort of information really um, informative, perhaps coming from a savvy person. The information you're getting, pile number two, is really going to help you out to balance your financial situation. Not only that, but we do see it's a new beginning in how you deal with money and investment moving forward. With the Knight of Swords, I do see you're becoming smart book smart i see here you are planning your 
investment and wealth and financial situation meticulously for your future. You have a vision of no longer wanting to be stuck in the future. And with the nine of wands, I see you standing there, making sure you protect that future, you protect that vision that you see, especially that now you have uh, this truth or this savvy information. And we see that you're making use you're making use of certain opportunities that aren't always there. The reason I say that is because the anemone is a flower that closes up its petal at night. Uh, it closes up its petal when it's raining, but then it always blooms back, right? So, and by the way, it's also the first signs of spring when it blooms. It's one of the early bloomers. So there's this idea that there are opportunities that open up at certain times for certain people, for the ones who know it, for uh, the ones who are savvy about it. Or maybe this is a business idea that is brilliant, that only you know about. So it's opening up an amazing opportunity for you. So with that, so with that, pile number two, you're opening up to yourself a huge business financial opportunity. And that's very clear here with the Ace of Pentacles and the Fool. And I see that you're being very careful with your money, with the Nine of Wands. You're now being very meticulous in terms of protecting this idea, protecting, um, protecting, the route in which you are going to achieve this through. So if you need to be saving up, you're going to do that. If you need to find time to do this idea, you're going to be doing that. You're going to take whatever is needed to protect that idea and make it happen for you. You're going to plan it very well and you, you have an eye on one goal and that's to take yourself from being stuck financially and perhaps liberating yourself and being financially free, enjoying your life, celebrating and enjoying your life later, later on. So this is kind of showing me the idea of delayed gratification. Um, looking forward to a beautiful future by reserving your, your, what you do now. So the nine of wands could be reserving yourself from spending from wasting time, from not working. You're, you're putting all in it at the moment. You're planning this very well, plan number two, and it's going to lead to amazing results for you. Now, this is the next phase of your life. This is not something that is happening in the future. This is the next phase in your life. In fact, I see this one truth changing your life completely you acting in a certain, uh, behaving in a certain way, having perhaps uh, habits of some sort, and you shifting these uh, habits completely to a stark difference, where you become a totally different person from how you acted in the past, in order to apply that truth or this information that you're getting. It's like uh, an amazing piece of information that is changing your whole life, your whole existence, just like an arrow to move forward. Um, pile number three. Wow, such an impressive reading. Really, really impressive. I want to now take a look closer at the two of cups here. I, as I was reading for you, I was really perplexed. What is this two of cups trying to say to me here? in your reading. I would say twos in general are the energy of duality and balance. And I do see both in your reading, duality and balance. So the, the, the two of cups I see are coming in harmony with some sort of duality in your life. You know, you could be a very ambitious person 
but you like comfort or you like spending or uh, you like any other thing that could have been perhaps standing in your way. So I see that there is a new goal, a new informa new information that has created a new goal that has that will automatically rectify uh, this old habit, change it completely from that moment because you have now a huge goal um, that you want to achieve. With that, you will learn a new habit that will bring balance into your life in a certain area. And um, in, within your reading, I do see that you will be achieving a lot of wealth, pile number two. You're being very savvy now, delaying gratification to achieve this wealth. Let's get more information for you about this business or wealth here. Uh, pile number three, apologies. So I know you'll be holding yourself back just like an arrow to move forward. So let's find, get more information about what this wealth is going to look like. Thank you very much. One, two, three, four, actually. Five, six. All right. So. Oh, okay. Pile number three. You have five of wands. You have the nine of wands with strength. Yeah, we did discuss that your nine of wands here with standing with strength against with the five of wands internal struggle of some sort. Um, you went back and forth, uh, forth about something. Should I spend? Should I not? Should I um, relax? Should I not? Something of that sort. You have the ten of pentacles. Talk about wealth. <laughs> Pile number three, congratulations. It seems that you are making some sort of generational wealth in your life that you and your children will be benefiting from. This is what I see here, is some savviness that will be passed on to generations. You have the eight of swords with interference. The Queen of Swords, the mask being taken off. We're talking about truth here. You've found out some sort of truth or a revelation. You have the Hermit card. Oh, I understand here. And you have the Magician. Of course, the Magician has all of the tools needed to make something happen. And with the Hermit card here, I kind of get this idea that not a lot of people will be venturing in the journey you are going through. With the Lotus flower here in this um, Hermit card and um, time clock, what is it called? Sand. Ugh hourglass <laughs> brain freeze i see that the lotus flower is related to birth and perseverance because it comes from the mud all the way up and blossoms so i do see that you're getting unique knowledge um with ancient here, it's not really ancient, but this knowledge is so savvy, not a lot of people know it. It's like some people know about it. Some truth is opening up to you. You're, it's like being woke, yeah? You're, you're waking up to some sort of truth, getting unique information that and because you're holding this unique information and you understand that it's time bound, that you have to do it now, act now, you'll be persevering knowing that you are going to blossom, that it's going to happen. And you, do, and you are um, 
you do realize that you have all of the resources needed, pile number three, to make it happen. And that's why you are planning meticulously for it with the Queen of Swords. So what do I see in terms of what you're achieving? You're, receive, you're achieving great wealth by fighting yourself internally first or um, working on yourself internally first. And ex uh, on the outside, you have the Eight of Swords again. Do you see? You're freeing yourself from being stuck either now or in the future by taking the correct steps whether um whether because the queen of swords acts without emotions so whether you feel like it or not is what i'm seeing whether you feel like it or not you're doing the right thing you're taking the mask of illusion out seeing the truth for what it is realizing what you need to know, do now and doing it regardlessly and because of this unique information and the actions that you'll be taking internally and externally, pile number three, you are building great wealth. There is no doubt about it. It was very clear uh, in your reading from the very beginning. Your reading shows that this is time bound, especially that we saw it with the anemone here. These are opportunities that blossom at certain times. And I see that now, now is your time, pile number two. I bet you, are, sorry, three. I bet you already know that, pile number three. And uh, look forward to this brilliant idea or information in specific that is very business savvy, that will be changing your whole life in terms of your wealth for your generation and the coming generations. Pile number three, all the best of luck with that. Do know that this is what's happening next in your life. So we're talking about energies that are starting now. All the best of luck with that, pile number three. May you always be blessed. I'm rooting for you, encouraging you, and um, may you always have great wealth, you and the coming generations. Pile number three, that was your reading. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm personally so excited for you. <laughs> And if you've enjoyed this reading, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Don't forget to click on your notification bell so you're notified right away when a reading is up. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book. This book could really help you out in your journey. It's small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate or waste time reading it. But it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying this process. This book holds true to its promise. And so if you're interested in that, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. Now there's also an audiobook if you're interested. I've just narrated it recently. I personally enjoy audiobooks a lot. Pound number three, wishing you all the best of luck from my heart. <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number four, welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful Garnet and the Gloxenia, and I kind of feel there's a very strong message with both of them um, that we'll talk about. But first, I, we have to see the rest of your cards. Let me show your card up close. It says, Love at first sight, which is what the Gloxenia is all about. I'll, I'll let you know more about it as we see the reading. It depends on what we see. But we do see, when I saw you, I fell in love. And you smiled because you knew. That's a quote by William Shakespeare. Uh, let's see what it's about. Could be a love reading. Could not at all. Let's see first, right? It could be you getting something that you absolutely love and may transform your life. Who knows? Let's find out together, pile number four. So let's take a look at your Oracle cards. First, you have, ooh, you have the river. I do feel like something is starting to r reveal and appear in your life. Um, pile number four. It's kind of like you couldn't see how it could happen, but it's going to start appearing into your life where you only believe it when you see it kind of thing. Uh, the river is flowing, creating life in your, in your life. 
So you have the sun in Capricorn with achievement. I feel like some sort of dream that you have or a wish is starting to appear in your life. And you have the cobweb protected from negative forces beyond your control. Isn't that wonderful? I love that for you, uh, pile number four. Okay, so now let's take a look at your tarot cards and get more information about what is revealing, uh, what new event is being revealed in your life now, what's happening next. You have the five of wands, interesting energy to show up okay you have judgment you have the ace of swords the three of swords you have the seven of swords yeah um, I can see why you have protected from negative forces beyond your control. Now I see you have the chariot. Again, if you saw the chariot fall in the preparation, this is a confirmation that this is your pile. You have the five of swords. My goodness, this is serious. Okay. And you have justice ending your reading. Okay. So what do we see here? Here we see in your reading pile number four with the judgment card. A new eon or era happening in your life. So this is after all not a love reading at all. Or although it could be for some of you, of course. This could be uh, pertaining to uh, a, a love connection, but that's not what I'm seeing for most of you. Here with Three of Swords, we do see uh, relics of someone in the heart. You know how in the Victorian era it was really in fashion, on, in fashion to wear lovers' hair as accessories to hold it close to the heart. So what I'm getting out of this here is that you used to have a good connection with certain people surrounding you. This could be family, friends, colleagues. These were people who meant so much to you. We do see that these people broke your heart. We see the five of wands, the five of swords, and with the seven of swords, I do see that there was a lot of deception, a lot of lies, a lot of backstabbing, um, a lot of competition, jealousy perhaps um, wanting to get the best out of you or wanting to take the best from you and defeat you this is awful energy pile number four awful and um, there was this main goal here of breaking you down putting you down it's not just about taking something from you and moving on we really do see the energy of wanting you down, uh, lying, deception, speaking behind your back, taking something from you, being in competition from you, it's just malicious, toxic energy of people you loved who were only looking out for themselves, did not cherish the connection the way that you have held it in your heart, pile number four. To you, it meant a lot. Uh, to them, it was um, competition and jealousy. Perhaps you were way ahead of them. Uh, perhaps with the achievement card, you, you were an overachiever. You were someone who was very successful. Someone who uh, was always transforming with a butterfly. 
someone who was very magnetic and attractive with the garnet. Overall, the people surrounding you in one area of your life, this could be a best friend, this could be family, this could be colleagues, like I said, these were people who were supposed to be there for you, but decided to defeat you. You know how when you're in war, you're all against an enemy? It is shocking when these same people are the ones who turn against you, not against the goal or whatever you're moving towards, right? So there is a new era in your life, a new start and a new clear beginning for you, pile number four, where you are rising high, rising in terms of achievement. You're building a lot of um, success, achievement, whereas you, this used to trigger them in the past. You're, you're going far ahead where it's very hard now to bring you down, pile number four. This new era is starting now. This is the intention of the reading. What's happening next in your life? You're rising so high that it's very hard to get to you and you're getting your justice <clears throat> with that, with your rising, pile number four, of you defeating them through success and not through their uh, dishonest war. And that's why you have, the, you have the cobweb here. It's like they kept you entrapped for years and years, for a long time. You, were, you did feel stuck. But with this new era that you're entering into pile number four, you're no longer entrapped. In fact, just as the card suggests, you're, pro you're protected from these negative forces that used to be beyond your control. And so here, it makes a lot of sense. We do see where there was loss of hope in the past. Things were really blurry. And now you can, you're starting to see how you're winning uh, over this energy, how you're rising. And it's really funny because here I see the chariot being presented in war. That's what really made me grasp this whole energy in this reading in the first place. And chariots in the past, they were great tools in war because whereas everyone else was fighting on horses, having a chariot was a really, was a huge, huge advantage because two horses were, were pulling the chariot to the front. One person was in charge of maneuvering the horses and the other was just focused on winning the war. And so here we see you're at an, a great advantage with the position that you're getting into now, pile number four. And you're starting to see that with this river, where there was no hope in the past. You're starting to see this era that you're getting into. And so this is where justice is happening here with these people, because all they wanted was to see you being defeated. Now justice is happening where with this new era, a boundary is set in terms of them not able to put you down. And with that, they lose their own war, pile number four. Your achievements are going to be so high that it's going to be all striking. And the reason I'm saying all striking is because the Gloxenia, um was discovered in uh, Brazil and Central America by uh, uh, Bota um, we, we, I know we don't say it botanist, botanist, I think it is how you pronounce it, a botanist uh, called Glockson in the 18th century. It's, he was a German, a German botanist. And so when they discovered it, and especially when the Victorians saw it as well, it was love at first sight. It, it is such a beautiful flower. So there is a gasp here. You're, you're entering into a new era of huge achievement that is going to be gasped at. All these people who hurt you here are going to go, oh, it's unbelievable the amount of... Um, 
success and how it's going to look like to these people where you're no longer untouchable they cannot be saying the same things that they used to say behind your back they not, cannot hit you in the same ways that they used to hit you because for some reason this wealth or this success is protecting you where they felt they finally beat you and brought you down justice is coming to you my dear pile number four through your success and hard work we do see the swords here your sword you're wielding your sword and you are rising where while their swords are coming down right under each other here pile number four wow what great success when is this happening it's happening now this is what's happening next in your life this is the new event and Let's get more information about this new event, this new era, how it's going to happen, what it's going to look like, pile number four. This is such a magnificent reading. It's, uh, yeah, all striking. I have the same uh, feeling that this Gloxenia is giving me uh, in your reading, pile number four. So let's find out together how your success is going to look like and how it's protecting you from them. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so you have the three of pentacles. Works. You're doing something that is going to work. <laughs> and I initially saw, saw these as pentacles. I know they're the spray bottles, but I initially saw them as pentacles. I see you're planning something, you're drawing something, you're working on something now that's going to bring you perhaps a lot of work and it's going to work it's going to bring you a lot of yeah work it's going to bring you a lot of money and it's going to work this also fell what is that Ooh, the universe pile number four so not only is the universe a card signifying the end of a cycle but here it's a card signifying that you're going to have everything perhaps this is uh, your life coming in full circle, having wealth, having love. Um, that's why you have the justice card. It's like here, huh, well, this person is now dead. We're over and done with this person. Dead, of course, uh, metaphorically. This done, this person is defeated. They have nothing. It's like they didn't want you to have anything. And the justice that's coming here is that you're going to be having everything why you with the three of pentacles this could be work that works you also working on yourself especially that you have the garnet here and uh, the garnet exudes attractiveness so you worked on yourself in so many forms perhaps you're becoming someone pound number four people gasp at oh what is this person you know um you seem to be someone who is going to be very blessed in so many forms, especially as I see in your card here. When I saw you, I fell in love and you smiled because you knew. It's like you have this different energy and aura towards you where people feel, wow, who is this person? How can they be that blessed? They are amazing in every way, shape and form. That's the sort of energy that I'm seeing here for you, uh, pile number four. So, yeah, so we're seeing work that is going to work. We're seeing, you, we're seeing you glow up. We're seeing you shining. We're seeing you come in full circle in terms of achieving everything that you ever wanted, pile number four. It's like they didn't want you to have anything. And with the universe, you're having everything. And that's how your justice is being a repaid pile number four pile number four i'm so sorry and i'm so <laughs> happy for you um i want to know how is uh well how is justice going to happen i i think these two cards are really answering this question for you in terms of healing your broken heart with these people let's get more information oh thanks let's get more information here on how you're getting your justice from them uh, pile number four. So. I guess it's uh, time 
where, where karma is coming into full circle. Now it's time for you to get your karma. You have the Hierophant, and Hierophant is a card also about learning, right? So we're seeing that they are learning a great lesson at the moment with what they've done with you in the past. It's like life will be teaching them greatly through your success, through your rise, your new era. There's teaching here. They're learning their lesson with what they've done here to you. Wow. <coughs> you have the Queen of Pentacles. Uh, we see here that they will realize that you're totally independent of them now. That despite the fact that they felt that you were entrapped, you were able to find your way out. Just like a mountain goat here, as depicted in the Queen of Pentacles. The mountain goat is really impressive in how it's able, with its four legs, to climb the steepest mountains. So you, it is all striking to them how you were able to maneuver through this trap that they thought they entrapped you in, how they felt you were defeated. How were you able to get up, not only get up, but rise this way with, this, with these huge achievements? So th there's a learning lesson here that all these games, not only do they not work, with you and maybe perhaps with others not only will it make them feel powerless but it's a huge lesson to them in how they thought they could treat you pile number four in understanding who you are but most importantly it is a huge lesson for their spiritual journey that in order to feel higher one must not bring others down, but to focus on their own independence. It's like you're a curse and inspiration to them at the same time, this rise. It's a, it will break their hearts, but it's a huge learning lesson and inspiration where they learn if you can come out of this steep lesson, they too can achieve so much in life. And life is about rising and competing with yourself and becoming better day after day than watching others and wanting to break them down instead of going up. I think this is the learning, great learning lesson here that I'm seeing, uh, pile number four, in your reading. You have the... Oh, let me adjust that. There we go. You have the King of Swords. You have the Two of Pentacles change. This is an era of change for all of you in so many ways. And this is the Six of Cups. Look, pile number four. Uh, as you rise here, I do see that they have mixed feelings with the yin and yang. With the yin and yang, I see part of them is suffering your rise and the other part is watching you become stronger watching you become magnetic watching you shine and they're re-remembering with the six of cups the connection now that you used to have together so your rise is bringing a lot of past memories to them making them remember what could have been if they had been in your life with your current rise, who you're becoming and what they have lost in this process. Yeah, uh, pile number four, there's a lot of suffering and learning lesson here. Not suffering, but heartache is, is the exact word I'm looking for. There's a lot of heartache, reminiscing, feeling like they've lost a lot being inspired by you to get up, learning that it's about improving oneself and not toxically, in a toxic way comparing oneself to others and hating them for what they have. It's a, it's a rough lesson for them that will, it's like a, a wake up, a rise for them as well, a wake up in their spiritual journey. 
with the King of Swords. Uh, I feel they, you will be inspiring them to balance themselves out and start their own journey, to put this in the past and start focusing and letting their dreams be their compass, adjusting their intentions. towards what they want now that they know that putting you down is not going to work anymore. The only way for them is to go up now. So we see that their goals will now start to become their own compass. They will start uh, moving towards what they want, being inspired by you, learn, having, getting a great lesson because there is some sort of something coming into the light here so you coming into the light and shining this way is bringing two of pentacles energy it's kind of like perhaps their grounds are unstable in terms of what the lies that they used to say so they're on shaky grounds now perhaps not believed any longer Also, they are on shaky grounds and feeling that they've missed out on this era that you're entering. And uh, this is uh, bringing a lot of memories from the past, uh, making them understand what they've lost, how it could have been had they kept this connection with you. There's so much going in their heads with this energy here, pile number four. As for you, my dear friend, this is your new era now of rising. What you're working on works, is working. You're coming in full circle of everything that you wanted to achieve. I wish you all the best of luck with that. I'm very sorry with this bad energy. And may you always rise, pile number four. May you always be blessed. That was your reading, pile number four. May people always gasp when they see you. <laughs> May you always gasp at your blessings. And pile number four, that was your reading. If you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Don't forget to click on your notification bell. I'm really excited about this new era. Please do let me know how things work out for you. I'm rooting for you. And also pile number four, uh, if you're interested, uh, please don't forget to check out my productivity book. This book is small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate or waste time reading it, but it could help you out in your journey. Uh, um, it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying this process. And so if you're interested in that, this book truly holds true to its promise. You'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. There's also an audiobook for it now if you enjoy audiobooks. Pile number four, giving you a big hug. <laughs> so happy with this new era of your life. And may you always be blessed. I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.